If we look at the electronic healthcare record, that little automated disaster we have, how come it looks like it does? Right? And I'm going to do a brief history here. And I can do that because when I started as a GP, I bought a practice from another guy. In Belgium, you own your practice. Right? I bought the house and the bedroom and the kitchen and the practice and the patients, right? everything. You can buy patients there, except the patients don't get the cut. <laughs> now, when I got this practice from this guy, what happened is he didn't have any records. You know, records is for wimps. Right? You don't you know, actually sit and write stuff, right? especially since about two thirds of the visits were uh, at home, going to the patient. So I did. To compare with Sweden, here we do about 12 or 14 or 16 patients a day in the practice. In Belgium, it's between what I did, 35 to 60 patients a day, two thirds of which home calls. You know, you can imagine the kind of attention these patients got. It's like, give me the money and you're gone again. But what he had as a record system was this everything that came in from specialists, labs, and so forth were carefully arranged chronologically. That means he dumped them on a heap, right? As they came in, on the heap, right? Then, as the patient came to see him or he went to the patient, he first had to know when did this patient actually go see a specialist or have a lab report done or anything. In that case, around what time, right? Around what date was this? And then it starts looking because it's chronological, right? So you find this paper and you say, the patient is there and you discuss this thing with the patient and you prescribe your medicines and other referrals, whatever you do, and then you dump this paper on top of a second heap. That is the heap of done, right? These two heaps, that was the record system, nothing else. If there was something really remarkable, maybe he wrote something in the margin, but it didn't match because he would never find that paper again because it just went into the heap. But he was very careful, don't touch the heap because it's a certain order here. And if he really needed to find something, well, you could maybe, you know, locate about where it was according to season, at least. Then, this is beginning of the 80s. And I think in Sweden they had records all, for a long time already, but in, not in Belgium. It was like, you know, what you need that for? <clears throat> in the general practice in hospitals you had more. Uh, then there came a movement that actually wanted to force general practitioners to keep records, if you can imagine that. Mm? And they get extra pay for doing that. And mainly for two reasons. One is, if you get sued for something and you have no record whatsoever, you're going to hang. I mean, this is, it doesn't matter what you did. You didn't have any records, it's your fault. Right? Second thing is, um, Transparency, if you need to hand over your patient to somebody else, there should be something on paper. But also you make less errors because some things, the patients, you know the patients. You know what, you know, this is a room, or this is thyroid, whatever, you know that. But you don't know, did I already check this radiology or did I prescribe this or what did I prescribe the last time? You don't know that. Those are details and you write those down. The records you make this way do not serve to describe the patient. They only serve to describe the details. When I took over this practice from the other guy, I, went, yeah. I worked together with him for two years. And the only reason I worked together for him for two years are two reasons. One reason is to get to know the patients, to get that picture of the patient, which isn't in the record. He didn't have any records, but even if he had, it would be the same thing. And um, the second thing is that the patient got to know me so they didn't run away when he left. Right? It's a purely commercial thing. But even after that, when I sold my patients to the next guy, I gave them these things, but I still had to you know, tell them about the important patients because that information is not in the record. The record here is like a logbook of a ship which says that date we were there and so forth. It doesn't teach you how to drive the ship. It only gives you the details. This is the log. So it's m much more like a log book, which explains why it's chronological, why it describes what the patient said, what you do, and so forth. 
a few general things I wrote on the outside of the envelope, like allergies and uh, um, things like that. Or this patient never wakes up before 10 in the morning. So I know not to go there then. But then, um, if we can move ahead here, the same records all of a sudden got to important to a lot of people. And they started complementing this with all kinds of, you know, the uh, physiotherapist and the specialist and everything got collected into the same. This still logbooks. Right? In essence, they only describe what has happened along the way. None of these documents actually give an accurate state of the patient. There is nowhere a single place where the patient is described as he is now with a changing description. See what I mean? For those of you who have done software, how many of you have done source code control? Well, everyone else who has done software and hasn't done source co code control, be ashamed. Okay? In source code control, what you do is when you write programs, you often change stuff. And you know, when you change stuff, stuff breaks. And then you say, what did I change? And you go back. And source code control is nothing else than taking a snapshot of your source code. When you change something, analyzing what you changed and recording that change. So what you get is a starting state, the first piece of software you wrote, and then you get a long row of small records that show, you, okay, you added a line there, you took away a line there, you changed this, and so forth. So then you can go back in history, back and forth in history, to see when did I do what? This, I almost said patient, this customer had the problem. Well, it must be this version, and he got the problem after I changed that line, that's what I did wrong, right? So you have a static picture of this is your program. This is a list of changes. And interestingly, if you look around in practically everything in data processing, I've never seen this described, you see that every system has a mixture of these two elements. A static image of something, a record of changes. If you look at accounting, the static image of it is the balance sheet. The changes are the different entries. Right? If you have a word processing, like Microsoft Word, the static image is your text. The change record, if it's present, is the marking of changes. You know, with the thing in the edge and crossing over and so forth. Practically every uh, application system has an element of these two. So does medicine. The patient is, that's the status. The patient has changed, the change record is the medical record that we have. Now this should tell you something. We're missing half of the record. We're missing the state. We only have the change record. This is exactly as if you, when you were trying to build a program, nobody gave you the source code. They only gave you the change records. And then now you have to figure out how this program could possibly have looked if you only saw the change records. So what you're doing as a doctor when you're reading a medical journal is not actually absorbing information. It's trying to reverse engineer how the patient must have been and how he is according to what you see in this record. It's an intellectually almost impossible task. You go nuts trying it. And you have to do this every time you see the patient unless you know the patient, but you don't anymore because currently you don't have a constant doctor. You always get another one. And everyone has to build this picture in his mind over and over again which you don't, which ends up with you do stupid things to people because you don't know, how, you don't see the picture. No remarks about that. They are what? Beautiful handwriting, yeah. Well, even if it's handwriting or it's um, typed, the same thing. It's the, the information is along the wrong axis, so to speak. It's chronological. That's not what we need when we see a patient. 